Have you ever had that eureka moment where the most amazing idea suddenly pops into your head and you just need to write it down? Or maybe you once tried telling a story. The beginning is super exciting, but soon you get writer's block and you can't figure out what happens next in your tale. Perhaps you play an instrument and spend time practicing a piece until it's just right. And maybe you try painting something, but it doesn't quite look how you want it to. So you share it with a teacher to get feedback on what you can change. If you have done any of these things, you are part of what is called the creative process. This is when you think and do things to make stuff, whether an invention, a story, a song, or a painting. And the creative process has shaped your life in countless ways. Everything people have ever created, from the wheel to the James Webb telescope, exists thanks to the creative process. The same goes for every song, story, painting, sculpture, movie, video game, and virtually every object in the room you're in right now. Look around you. Everything you see made by people was at one point a figment of someone's imagination. Someone had to think, plan, explore, problem solve, draft, and craft all this stuff into existence. Even the building itself. You're inside watching this video right now thanks to people who used their creative process to invent and make concrete over 8,000 years ago, running water, 5,000 years ago, electrical systems 150 years ago, and the first version of the modern internet 40 years ago. Now that I've gotten on the internet, I'd rather be on my computer than doing just about anything. It's really cool. In fact, the creative process is what led to every invention, innovation, idea, and artistic expression ever. Creativity is a unique defining feature of being human. As far as we know, humans are the only known species on Earth that can imagine new possibilities and then use our brains, hands, and tools to make them a reality. That's why humans make cities, art, movies, stories, and culture. A fish, dogs, and gorillas don't. So, it's clear humans are creative beings, and our creativity enables us to shape aspects of our world in the way we want or need. But what is the creative process? What steps must we take to harness the power of creativity ourselves? Can we use our creativity to bring new ideas to life? Let's take a closer look so we can have a better understanding of how the creative process can be a powerful tool in our lives. The creative process can be broken down into eight stages. Inspiring, imagining, planning, exploring, producing, revising, and sharing. Throughout the process, we are continually reflecting on our work and getting feedback from our peers and teachers. But let's think of it as a circle, because very often when we create something new, it inspires us for our next project. And we can always move back and forth between steps too. If you are revising something and suddenly think to yourself, wait, I have a new thing to add to this, then there's nothing stopping you to going back to the exploring stage. So I want you to consider the creative process as a wheel leading from one endeavor to the next. Once again, the creative process is inspiring, imagining, planning, exploring, producing, revising, and sharing, while always reflecting and looking for feedback. Okay, now this all might be a bit overwhelming. I am sure you have all at some point created a piece of art, made up a story, or written a new song. But you never really thought about the steps you took 
to make those things. I mean, surely, you don't follow all these steps of the creative process every time you make something new, you just make it. Well, I'm here to say, you actually probably do use the creative process. You just don't realize it. And to prove this, let's go on a bit of an adventure. We're going to travel back in time to when you were four years old. Ready? It's a rainy day on a weekend and your parents or guardians have hung a colorful piece of art on the fridge that you just made. How did that picture get there? Well, first, you were handed a box of crayons and paper and given the opportunity to draw. Whatever impulse moved you to open the box of crayons was inspiring. So let's do this thing! Let's do this. Next, you had to think of something to draw. Maybe it was a picture of your family or a creature you saw in your dream the night before. You're pretty sure it had three eyes. Or maybe you just wanted to scribble something on the page. Even that was a creative thought. And in that thinking, you were imagining. Believe it or not, even as a four-year-old, you can make plans. It can be as simple as gathering the colors to use, going with markers instead of crayons, or maybe you'd get rid of drawing altogether and choose to fold and cut the paper to make a snowflake instead. You find a spot by the window because it's nice and bright there. And the table is your craft table, so it doesn't matter if you get markers all over it. You have space now to be creative. This is all planning. Next, you put your plan into action. You might try to use one crayon at a time or draw by holding them all at once. Maybe you press really hard with the crayon or try drawing on your hands and the walls instead of the paper. This part of the process is exploring. It's all about experimentation. Then in the next phase of the creative process, you are following through with your plans and explorations, finishing the drawing as best you can. You are producing. But wait, it's snack time. You take a break from your hard work, and while you're eating your sliced apple, you remember the creature you saw in the dream last night. It actually had four eyes, not three, and come to think of it, it was blue, not green. After your snack, you return to your drawing and add those changes. By rethinking the image and making those changes, you are revising. And when you present your drawing to your parents or guardians, they proudly put your work on the fridge. You're sharing it with the world. Okay, we're back. What have we learned by traveling back in time? We have proven to ourselves that we use the creative process and have been using it instinctively since we were little, and that's pretty cool. Being creative comes so naturally to people because humans have been creative for thousands upon thousands of years. But that doesn't mean it's some mysterious trait that's passed down from generation to generation. To think that only some people are lucky enough to have creativity while others who are not so lucky is untrue. The fact is, everyone is capable of being creative. After all, it's called the creative process. And like any process, you can learn to be more creative. If you play an instrument, you'll become a better musician. If you play basketball, then you'll get better at putting up shots. And the more you allow yourself to be creative, the more creative you will become. Like this person. Let's take a closer look at a few steps of the creative process to discover how we can enhance our creativity. The first stop on our creative journey is inspiration. Where do ideas come from? Oddly, we don't actually know for sure. 
Some people believe they come from the mind and that our thoughts are a bunch of chemical reactions and electrical impulses happening in our brain. Others believe ideas are spontaneous, which means that they are automatic, just like the beat of your heart. They inexplicably happen on their own. Eureka, there's an idea. So if you ever get in trouble at school for daydreaming during class, just tell your teacher, I am so sorry, but I can't help it. My brain is being creative. Still others believe ideas are shaped by the world we live in. That means all our ideas are formed by our senses, what we see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. And without our senses, we wouldn't be able to think. To see what I mean by that, imagine for a moment living in a world where the colors of the rainbow don't exist. Would it be possible to imagine the color blue or green or gamboge? If thoughts come from our senses, as some people believe, then the answer would be no. Unbelievably, scientists know there are colors in this world that we can't see. We know this by studying birds. Birds have additional sensors in their eyes, so they can see colors called ultraviolet that are invisible to humans. So, can you envision what those colors might look like in your mind, even if you can't see them? In any case, whether ideas come from our brains spontaneously or from a sense of the world is unclear. It could very well be that they come from a mix of all three, but just because it's unclear about where ideas truly come from doesn't mean we can't find ways to get more inspired. Here are a few things to get you started. Go outside. Spending time in nature does two things. First, it exposes you to many new sounds, sights, and smells. The songs of birds, the millions of shades of green in trees, the smell of leaves. On your next outdoor adventure, whether you pay close attention to your surroundings or let your mind wander, you're using your senses, and senses lead to new ideas. You can also experience art. By art, I mean any creative thing made by someone else. When we attentively read a book, watch a movie, look at art, and listen to music, we will inevitably be inspired because when we do these things, we are filling our heads with ideas that we can then evaluate and recombine in new ways to come up with our own ideas. And finally, you can look at things differently. Practice looking at the world in a new way. Changing our perspective helps us form new ideas. You could speak to someone with different opinions and experiences than you and try seeing things from that person's point of view. Even if you don't accept their ideas in the end, you are empathizing and developing the ability to look at things in new ways. Whether you're exploring the world outside, the world of a story, or trying to understand how your friends view the world, you are being inspired. Inspiration is an idea so powerful that it moves you to do something about it. It can be a strong emotional impulse and something you feel a deep connection with. The thought of working on this idea might fill you with joy, purpose, or both. And this leads us to the next step of the creative process, which is imagining. Just how people don't know where inspiration truly comes from, scientists haven't really figured out how our brain actually imagines things either. But we do know that to imagine things uses a lot of brain power. That's because it requires us to use our memory, our senses, and our creative mind, and to combine these things in new and surprising ways. We can do a simple exercise to illustrate this. First, choose two animals that are completely different. Maybe one soars through the air while another swims through the sea. Maybe one is as large as a building while the other is smaller than a breadcrumb. Once you've chosen your creatures, 
Picture what they might look like if they were combined into one. Does it have the head of one creature and the body of another? Or is it divided down the middle? Does it have wings or horns? Does it have two heads? Are there parts of the creature that are from a third animal? In picturing this new creature, you've created a chimera. A chimera is an imaginary creature made up of two or more separate, unrelated animals. To make your chimera, you had to use your senses to see what these animals looked like at one point, your memory to recall them, and your creative mind to combine them in surprising ways. Believe it or not, most made up creatures, whether it be a mythical monster, modern superhero, or a Pokemon, are the result of human imaginations being able to combine things and ideas that exist in the real world to create something new. Let me show you. Lizard plus bat wings plus fire equals dragon. Human plus bat equals bat girl. Lion plus eagle equals griffin. Amphibian plus dino feet plus flower bulb equals Bulbasaur. Now, imagining the James Webb Space Telescope before it existed is a little more complicated, and usually there are teams of people who imagine things together. However, the process of imagining is still the same. People are inspired to use their senses, memory, and creative reasoning to think of something new. Now that we have imagined something, it's time for planning. People often get stuck in the creative process because they haven't made a good plan. Now the rest of the plan is simple. I fly to the moon. I shrink the moon. I grab the moon. I sit on the toilet with what? Remember, when we were four, this was as simple as getting your markers, paper, and crayons out and finding your favorite place to create. Now that you're older, you can do more complex projects than crayon drawings, but you need a little more preparation to make it happen. When you're doing something creative, make sure to figure out your goal. You can set goals by asking yourself, what am I trying to achieve? And what steps do I need to take to accomplish my goal? This is also the time to create space and gather materials for your work. I am a composer and I get to write music for films, theater, and concert stages. My projects are often complex and sometimes take a long time to complete, so planning is essential for me. Let's take a quick virtual tour of my studio to see how I plan for a new project. This is my workstation. This is my assistant. My studio has everything I need to succeed on a creative project. Pencil and paper is the quickest way to write down my inspirations and imaginings and remember them later. Some projects can take a week or even months, so this is very useful. Here is my assistant setting up my keyboard. And here she is checking my microphone. I have a comfortable chair and I keep my lights low, which helps me with my focus. This may seem like a small thing, but making sure you're comfortable and able to concentrate is very important to being creative. Finally, I've got two ways of listening to the music that I produce, headphones and speakers. When you set out on your next creative adventure, I encourage you to make a plan. It doesn't have to take long. All you need to do is set a goal, create a space for your work, and gather the materials you need to get started. For the next few steps, I'm going to lump it into one group because at this point, things really don't need to happen in order. Those steps are exploring, producing, and revising. Creators will jump back and forth between these stages, but generally they are all part of the creating part of the creative process. Exploring is your time to experiment, take risks and make mistakes like this potter. In 
in my studio, I explore by improvising on my piano, recording myself hitting things with drumsticks, or singing into my microphone, and experimenting with all the different virtual instruments I have on my computer. When I do this, I take a lot of risks and make a lot of mistakes. Like anyone who is a creator, I often fail here. But this is a good thing, because at the same time, I'm learning something new about my work. As I experiment, those failures will gradually turn into successes. And as I play, I will then start to move on to producing. Producing for a painter is putting paint on the canvas. For a writer, it's typing up the next page of their book. And for a composer, it's recording music. That might mean making notation, or it could be recording music for a movie or an album. Producing is about taking everything you've learned while you were exploring and making choices that will likely end up in your finished creation. Revising is the part where I take time to adjust my music to sound exactly how I want it to. Maybe I want to add a little echo on the bass drum, or maybe I want to make the piano sound a little warmer. For a creator, revising is the sparkle you add to make your creation as great as you imagined it to be. I'm gonna show you an example. Here's the first clip where everything is almost finished on a short piece I wrote for a musical. It sounds pretty good, but I want to add some subtle changes to make it pop. See if you can hear the difference. This piece is supposed to represent a big bad villain, so I've added a choir of people shouting, hey, to give it some intimidating weight. I've also added an instrument called a dulcimer, which kind of sounds like a twangy guitar. This adds a little more brightness or sparkle to balance out the dark, heavy sounds of the orchestra. Did you hear the difference? Great. So now that we've explored, produced, and revised, then you're ready for sharing. For many creators, this is the most exciting and nerve-wracking part, where you finally share your work with the world. Can you think of a time when you had to give a presentation, perform a recital, or act in a school play? How did you feel right before you went on stage? What was it like while you were performing? Many artists will tell you that they get nervous or excited or a combination of both, which is something I like to call nervous sighted And it happens to everyone. Why would anything be wrong? I'm totally fine. Magic's fine. Louisa's fine. I'm totally not nervous. Your eyes doing the thing. I have never met a creative person who didn't get nervous excited or nervous sighted when it came time to share their work. But something else can happen where the nervousness becomes so strong that it becomes fear. Mm. We all sometimes feel that we will make mistakes, not do something well enough, or that other people might not be interested in what we are creating, thinking, and feeling. Fear is when those feelings are so strong that they stop us from ever creating stuff in the first place. That's why I think it's important to talk about them in case anyone struggles with these feelings of fear. Here's something you can consider if you are a creator who suffers from fears of sharing. No piece of art ever created is perfect or universally loved by everybody. And that's a good thing. That's the beauty of art. When you share your work, it's sort of like a conversation where the people who view it do so with their own experiences, opinions, and tastes. Art is subjective, which means that some folks are going to love it and maybe some won't. Not everyone likes opera. 
and not everyone likes pop, but that doesn't mean these aren't amazing genres of music because other people believe that opera and pop are incredible. If you continue to create and share your work, you will find your people. So don't wait until you think you've perfected your craft before sharing it with others. When we are exploring, producing, and revising, we are meant to make mistakes and occasionally fail. It's a normal part of the process, but it can sometimes feel negative and overwhelming. What can we do about it? Well, you can remind yourself what inspired you to create something in the first place. Remember that first part? Your inspiring idea that was so powerful, you couldn't wait to get started. So let's do this thing! Let's do this. That idea filled you with joy and purpose. If you can remember why you started in the first place, you will feel more confident to push through the more challenging parts of the creative process and find the confidence to share your work when you are finished. Most importantly, when you create something, whether on your own or with a team, you bring your unique experience of the world to it. No one can make, think, or create exactly like you. That means when you create something, you are amplifying your voice and making an impact in a way that no one else in the world can. Remember what we discovered earlier. Creativity is not something that some lucky people inherit while others just don't have it. Everybody has the potential to be creative because creating is a process that anyone can participate in. So while you may hit some bumps along the way, never doubt for a minute that in the end, you will make something truly spectacular. When you're in the creative process, I want you to remember what it was like to make stuff when you were little. Drum beats on pots and pans, singing made up songs, dancing around the room, or scribbling on paper. Why did you do these things? Because it was fun! For any of you who doubt creating something new and trying to make something you've never tried making before, put your doubts and fears aside. And remember what it was like to create when you were little. Experimental, exploratory, and fun. Now get out there. The world can't wait to see what you'll create next. Thank you.